All right, guys, today is a big day. We got, as you can see here, uh, a new engine, I guess you could say, even though it's not so new. And beside me, which you can't really see, is another transmission for it. And right here is the old transmission that came out. So the four speed and we got a five speed. Now what we're gonna be doing in this video is just gonna be cleaning up the five speed transmission, seeing what we're dealing with there, and then going through, kind of just making a list of stuff we wanna do on this engine with all the parts that I showed you guys in the update video, just kind of figuring out what the main plan is to get this engine in here. So that's pretty much what's gonna be going on. Hope you guys are stoked as we are because the car's gonna be running soon. All right guys, this video is actually a double feature. We're gonna be doing a little bit of stuff on my STI as well. As you guys saw in my last video, we put the turbo back exhaust system on it. So to go with that, I got a PTP turbo blanket for it to keep the temperatures inside the engine bay down. We don't wanna keep that, get that too hot. So I got the instructions here. We're gonna do before and after temperatures. We're gonna run the car with just no heat shield or turbo blanket at all and give you the temperatures that the turbo runs at and the intercooler and then we're going to toss the PTP turbo blanket on and give you guys the temperatures there as well as the instructions. Let's get to it. Alright guys, so we just want to give you a little bit of background info on this motor that we have here. So this is out of an 81 280ZX. Um, the motor, and the, or we know for sure that the body had about 400,000 kilometers on it. Um, the motor looks a little bit uh, a little bit worn down, but that's fine with what we're uh, gonna be doing. This is a little bit better block than the one that came out of my 280Z. And it's better for two reasons. The block has more coolant journals that go around each and every cylinder wall. So that's gonna be better for cooling. And it actually has more webbing in the actual um, block as well, so it's going to be a stronger block overall. Now I think the cylinder head that's on this motor is not the one that came with it. I think this is an N42 head, which actually raises sorry, the compression, compression ratio of the engine uh, to I think 10 to 1. I'm not, don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. This is just doing the based on the research that I've done. Um, which means the previous owner would have to do some actual cylinder head work with the cams so it doesn't um, pretty much destroy the engine with that compression ratio. So we'll see, it might have a performance cam in there, it might have a reground stock cam, we don't know. But this is what we're dealing with, so pretty excited about that. And you guys will see the videos, the teardown videos coming up soon. Quick little tip on Subarus, I know this is for the GD body for sure, so bug eyes, blob eyes, hawk eyes. There's actually a secret little spot for propping your hood higher. There's a little grommet here that goes inside this plug in the strut tower. You can actually remove your um, hood prop very easily, well, somewhat very easily. Comes right out and then you actually put it inside your hood first, like that, and then right into your strut tower like that. and then. Your hood pretty much sits at like a 90 degree angle from there. Gives you a lot more access at doing turbo stuff. Alright guys, just some basic information about a turbocharger. If you don't know, when you're taking these temperatures, the intercooler right here, top mount intercooler on the STI. Um, where the intercooler goes into the turbo and where the intake goes into the turbo, that's obviously your intake side. The exhaust side is where your downpipe comes up and your uppipe comes into it, or your exhaust manifold. If it's not Subaru, it's a little bit different layout. Um, so that's how you know what you're checking for temperatures. So the most important and crucial part on a top mount intercooler system is obviously the temperature of the intercooler because it's really close to the turbo and you get a lot of heat soak. Heat soak is not good. That's basically the turbo heating all the components of the engine that should be on the cooler side. So that's why we're installing this. We're gonna check the temperature on this side, which is the passenger side of the car, of the intercooler, because it's really close to the turbo, as you can see, and that's the side that's gonna be the hottest. Now, obviously, when the hood's closed and you're obviously running the car, you're gonna get a lot higher temperatures, but just for the sake of comparison, we're gonna check them both the same way. 
So we're about 87, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the intake side of the turbo, 150, 151, 152 degrees Fahrenheit. Looks like it's going up to 155. And the exhaust side, 230, 234 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna retake these temperatures and compare them with the turbo blanket on. Because obviously we wanna get, basically we want the intercooler to be as cool as possible and the intake side of the turbo to be as cool as possible. All right, so what we're gonna be doing now is just cleaning up all the gunk and crap on the transmission. We got like this multi-purpose degreaser here we're gonna be using. And we just wanna clean it up that way when we send it out to a transmission shop to get just checked, fixed up if it needs to be fixed up. It'll be nice and clean for them to uh, do all their checks. So let's get right into it. <laughs> Guys, this is the turbo blanket we're using. It's uh, pretty small because it's a stock turbo, but it's necessary. So the instructions that PTP supplies says that you don't have to remove the intercooler. You can get around uh, doing it without, but we're gonna remove it, it's pretty easy. The instructions don't include uh, guidelines for removing the intercooler, so we'll show you how to do that. Uh, it's pretty easy to install. It just comes with some wire, and uh, you're supposed to wrap the wire kind of like a figure eight around these two pegs and then feed the um, turbo blanket underneath the wastegate rod and then feed the wire around the turbo and then just grab needle nose pliers, pull it tight and then wrap it around this side. And that's, this side is shaped to allow movement of the wastegate rod. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Taking the intercooler off is really easy. 12 mil bolts, there's one here. There's another one on the opposite side of the uh, intercooler. There's two holding the recirculation valve on, and there's also two holding this bracket on. You can you can get away with not taking them off, but I usually at least loosen them off so the bracket kind of drops down. It gives you more space to pull the intercooler out. And then there's the gear clamp that holds the um, outlet of the turbocharger and the throttle body coupler. So those are just flathead screwdrivers to undo those. So let's just back those off. And then the one inside there. Twelve mil. Just crack these loose. And then this one right here. Just like so. And then you gotta get these couple hoses off here. There's one there. And then two here. Be careful with these. They can be very brittle and break easily if they haven't been replaced. And then, oh, forgot those bolts. And then there's a gasket there that, um, inspect it, make sure it doesn't crack when you pull this off, because if it does, it needs to be replaced. One thing I should have mentioned a little earlier, before you even start, make sure that the car's cooled down. Because we actually, after we took those previous temperatures, we let the car sit for 20 minutes just to cool down because this is obviously a hot area we're working in. So this is the wire they supply you with and you're gonna need needle nose pliers to kind of grab it and fish it around the turbo. All right guys, so it's installed. Um, 
Installation was pretty good. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, rivet uh, little pegs with the wire going around it. Like it's 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 pretty on there. Like it's it's snug. It's not loose. It's not off the turbo. And like in the instructions, it said it should just be making contact with the turbo. It shouldn't be like tight around it. But the, the, like this wiring down here is really stupid. Like I'm not a big fan of that. Um, other than that, we'll see how it performs temperature wise and go from there. All right, guys, we got the car running after we installed the PTP heat shield or uh, turbo blanket. We're gonna check temperatures now. So the most important temperature is the intercooler. But we're also gonna check the intake and exhaust side of the turbo as well. So let's take a look. Exhaust, 129 Fahrenheit. So before it was well over 200. It was like 212, I believe. The intake of the turbo. Can't really see, but 127. It's pretty consistent between the two. 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so well over 10 degrees cooler. Pretty good. Wait, was the intercooler at 90 before? It was at 90. Okay. And everything's cool to the touch. Like I could touch the exhaust side, no problem. So it's definitely doing its job. Yeah.